When we think of looking for extraterrestrial life, we tend to focus on Earth-like planets. That is, planets with conditions that are similar to our own. Life exists on Earth, the logic goes, so Earth-like conditions are probably a good bet to find more life. And yet, there are hundreds of billions of galaxies in the observable universe, each with billions if not trillions of stars, and most stars have planets orbiting them. That's roughly a million billion billion planets. The enormity of this number means it's probably safe to assume that there are many, many, many other planets with life, even intelligent life. And this, together with some basic physics and fancy statistics, implies it's more likely that species of intelligent extraterrestrials will live on habitable planets unlike Earth and will be unlike humans. More precisely, they'll be bigger than us and live in smaller groups on smaller planets. Now, I know it sounds crazy that with only one data point, us, we can make any predictions at all about aliens we don't even know exist. But we can. Here's how. A basic result in statistics is that there's a big difference between the properties of a typical individual and the properties of an individual in a typical group. The majority of humans, for example, live in countries with a population of at least 180 million people. But the majority of countries have populations of less than 6 million. And the majority of religious humans are members of religions with more than a billion followers, while the majority of religions have fewer than a million followers. And the majority of people who follow the English Premier League are fans of teams with hundreds of millions of fans, like Manchester United, while most teams have just a few million fans each. It doesn't matter how many individuals you have or how you make the groups. They can be religions or fans of sports teams or the ingredients of this trail mix. It is a mathematical fact that the group that the median individual belongs to will be at least as big as the median group. Or simply put, anytime groups are not all the same size, most individuals will be members of groups that are bigger than most of the other groups. The takeaway is that an individual should expect to be a member of a large group, not an ordinary one. If you don't know what group you fall into, like, I don't know what my blood type is, the most likely groups to be in are the biggest ones. I'm probably O or A positive. And when it comes to intelligent life forms, we humans don't know what kind of group we fall into. So statistics tells us that we, as individuals, should expect to be members of a large group of intelligent beings. That is, we should expect that our species has a higher population than most other species. And just knowing that we probably have a high population tells us a lot. For example, individual living beings require space to live. I mean, the countries with the biggest populations tend to have large land areas, so Earth with its high population is probably bigger than most other planets with intelligent life. Similarly, smaller living creatures need less space and energy per creature, and accordingly tend to have higher population densities. That's why there are way more ants on Earth than elephants. So humans, with our high population, are probably physically smaller than most other species of intelligent life. In fact, we should expect to be abnormal among intelligent aliens when it comes to anything that influences overall population size. Like, easily available energy makes it easier to maintain higher populations, so we should expect our sun to be somewhat hotter and brighter and closer than the stars of most intelligent alien species. And we should expect our atmosphere to be more transparent to our star's light, and so on. If all this sounds a bit unspecific, well, with just a few more simple and reasonable assumptions based on basic physics, we can be more precise. Researchers have predicted that the population of most intelligent alien species should be below 20 million individuals, the majority of planets with intelligent life should have less than 80% the radius of the Earth, and the individuals of most intelligent alien species should be at least as massive as polar bears. So instead of looking for nearby intelligent extraterrestrials on Earth-like planets, the intelligent approach might be to look for habitable planets slightly smaller, darker, and hazier than our own. In short, we should expect to be the Manchester United of the universe, searching for AFC Wimbledon. Hey, thank you for watching. This video was based on a scientific paper called The Size, Distribution of Inhabited Planets by a cosmologist named Fergus Simpson. He also has a website that uh, explains some of these things in more detail. It's called TheBigAlienTheory.com. So if you go there, you can find out more about the statistics here and about the predictions that uh, I'm explaining in this video. And also a big thank you to everyone who supports Minute Physics on Patreon, which is what allows me to make videos like this.